retaught him everything and soon after Buckley became a very important and respected member of the Wadarung and Buckley didn't hang around for a few weeks or months he ended up living with the Wadarung for 32 years eventually having a wife and children and he did his best to avoid European boats that were coming into the bay until one day a local group decided that they would raid one of the ships and Buckley was worried about their safety so he decided to put himself at the front of the pack and talk to the European settlers so the European settlers saw this giant white man with a big white beard who was acting and talking very much like he was one of the local indigenous people because essentially by this point he was. So during this process Buckley thought that he was going to be thrown back in prison and treated as a convict. His story amazed the authorities so much that they gave him a full pardon and employed him as a government interpreter. For the next couple of years Buckley worked as an interpreter between the indigenous groups and the European settlers that were surveying the lands. And that is one of the reasons why nearly everything in Western Victoria has its traditional indigenous name. After a couple of years Buckley didn't feel like he belonged to either one of these societies so he ended up going down to Tasmania and living the last 15 years of his life down there. The chances of all of this happening are quite minuscule. That is why we have the saying in Australia that you've got two chances Buckley's or none and that all comes from William Buckley. So this story is actually much more in depth a number of books have been written, and even if you listen to podcasts, quite often they'll go for one to two hours. But this is Buckley's Falls in Geelong, and that is one of my favourite Australian stories. Buckley's Chance.